Hello, this is Sculpt January number 23, and this time it's furniture. And I'm doing a Chesterfield leather chair that's a bit bashed in. So as per usual, I'm getting the basic shape before going into the sculpt. Just with the basic extrude loop cuts. I've got a mirror on at the moment and then I apply the mirror before going into the sculpt and obviously the sculpt has its own mirror mechanism. So I spend quite a long time getting just the shape as usual using the snake hook tool. I would say this takes at least half the time of the sculpt, that basic shape. This one took a good four hours, I would say. I spent way too long on it, but I was having quite a lot of fun. I do feel tired still. I think maybe I've picked up a little virus, which doesn't help, but I'm having fun learning a lot. So I'm going to keep going. Today was my day off from college, so it meant I could spend a bit of time doing it, but I was hoping to get ahead slightly and maybe start tomorrow's whilst I've got a long day. So once I've got the basic shape, I went to the pinch tool and I start setting out the seams obviously not the UV seams, the actual seams of the chair, and working on slightly more detail in the shape. I've got one main reference image that I'm going from, but I have got lots of reference images because that reference image is only from one angle, and I need to see the object from the back and from the sides and so on. I spent a fair bit of time getting these right as well, these sort of divot things with buttons in. And I was kind of experimenting, seeing what would work in terms of getting the shape. So I sort of dug into it and then lightened the brush in terms of its strength and dug into it again. It seemed to just about work. And of course the crease brush just between them, getting those leather folds. I like Chesterfield chairs, they seem quite classy in some strange way. I thought I'd go for some intricate carving on the legs, but I haven't got to that stage yet because that's obviously the detail level. So I've upped the detail of the dynamic topology and I'm going for kind of the second detail level, shall we say, before going to the finer details. That's where I made a mistake, I think. What I wanted to do was get a certain level of detail and then go across to the multi-resolution modifier. Because I do find that slightly better when you're dealing with the minute details like cracks in the leather or the wood. But I think I went across too early and I wanted to change the shape more than I did. I was worried that if I had too many faces and then tried to do another subdivision with the multi-resolution modifier, it would crash and I would have wasted my time going to a certain level of detail. But these things I'm learning as I go along. I think actually 
uh, 200,000 faces is fine and you can have a multi-resolution modifier and divide it, subdivide it a couple of times with my graphics card which is a GTX 980 and I went across a bit too early and I kind of wanted to do some more bigger details before those minute details and they weren't working particularly well. One really useful tool, in case you didn't know, is pressing Alt-F over a certain area of your shape will centre your camera around that point and you can rotate around it nicely. That's really, really helpful. Use that all the time. The underside, I'm assuming, won't be seen, so I just did a really basic job on that. I think also as well, before I go across to the multi-resolution modifier, I ought to try the remesh option rather than the decimate option. The remesh option is an option within the sculpt tools, and it seems to even out the topology rather than the decimate which works out which bits don't need topology and which bits do. So if you've got a sharp edge, you'll put more topology around that or more polys around that, whereas the remesh seems to do a more even job and that would probably be better for going across to the multi-resolution modifier. And you can see here I am in the multi-resolution modifier. I've subdivided it once and the detail I'm adding is probably a bit too much. I would have liked to have had a bit more freedom with this but as soon as you do the multi-resolution modifier you're kind of stuck to that shape and anything you do beyond that can deform your faces. Every now and again I say apply base, so that should move my base topology around to suit whatever changes I've made in my high poly. So going to the multi-resolution modifier from a decimate means that you haven't got even topology. So when I come into these little rivet bits here, they haven't really got enough topology where there is more polys in other places where I don't need them. So this is the more detailed work that I do with the sculpt. And you can see I haven't got enough topology there to do any more detail work with the carving of the wooden parts and I up the detail now, up the detail level and give it another subdivision and this is about as far as my graphics card will go it's about 4 million faces or something like that I certainly don't think I could subdivide again while screen recording and you can see there's sort of warping and I'm getting problems in some places So I get the general detail with the crease tool again and then I go across and grab a texture to paint with or to sculpt with. You can probably see some of my topology there looking a bit lumpy and it's difficult to smooth out those lumps in the multi-resolution modifier.
Most of my brushes are from textures.com, but some I just sort of grabbed from around the internet. And they're not necessarily leather brushes, but uh, I think this one was scraped metal, but they seem to work for what I need. I've got them on quite a low strength, so it should just be subtle detail changes just on the surface. So I'm going into the baking process here, and I skip most of that because it's a bit dull. I have found a slightly better way of baking, which seems to work every time this time, which is great, so I'm really happy about that, and I will put a tutorial out on that soon. And here I'm doing something slightly different. I thought, right, I'm going to do some texturing which I really shouldn't have done because I haven't got enough time, but I really wanted to. So I've got my ambient occlusion and my cavity hooked up together with a multiplied mix RGB, and then I put a texture into that, and I use that as a guide for my topology when I'm painting on the leather. And I'll probably do a tutorial on this as well. Uh, I'll do more sort of painting tutorials soon. It really did work quite well, better than I expected. And it made me think that I could possibly paint on the glossy maps as well fairly easily with this sort of technique. It really does make a big difference if you've got the cavity bake or the dirty vertex color bake. I went through a few textures for the wood, it wasn't really working that well and it's a bit tricky sometimes with the colours, especially when you're mixing RGB nodes for ambient occlusion and cavities and I ended up using this wood texture. It's very rough paint really, I just wanted to test things out, so I wanted to learn something new again. But again, I probably shouldn't have done this because I didn't really have enough time, and I'm now a tiny bit behind. And of course I've got my paintbrush on stencil mode. Now I'm actually using a screen brush, so lightening areas on the edges. I'm going in with a sort of brass texture and doing the little rivets. And there we have it, number 23, furniture, or in this case a leather seat, a leather Chesterfield seat. I hope you enjoyed it. This one was a really long one, so if you got this far, well done. Thanks very much for all the comments, really, really appreciated. And thanks so much to those people who keep commenting on each video. I really appreciate hearing from you and thanks so much for the support through the whole journey. So links in the description, get along to Sculpt January. There's some absolutely amazing stuff on there. I'm quite jealous of some of these guys. So well worth a look. I'll see you there.